Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, today, we are going to focus on competition readiness with the VEX EDR V5. Uh, the EDR V5 system uh, is brand new. Uh, there's a lot of teams out there that have the brand new kits, haven't been to a competition where it's been used. And so there's uh, some questions out there that we hope to be able to address and be able to support you uh, as you go on and have your first competition. Uh, this is the first of a series of webinars. Uh, we will be covering additional topics in the future. So if you have questions, uh, do feel free to send those uh, our way and we will do our best to cover any questions that you have. So. I have this webinar broken into two parts, uh, which is before your competition uh, and then also at the competition. So much of the, the competition readiness uh, you want to try to handle ahead of time, as opposed to trying to scramble to figure things out once you get there. Uh, that would just be higher stress. So uh, taking the time to do some of these steps that I recommend ahead of time uh, will allow you to have a much more successful experience. Uh, so specifically, we're going to cover uh, updating firmware, testing devices, making sure that you use the competition template, testing with a VEXnet switch, and also checking for rules compliance. So uh, updating firmware. Uh, this is uh, very important to do uh, as the system is uh, brand new and Thankfully, uh, the, the process has been greatly simplified with VEX Coding Studio and the V5 system. If you have uh, VEX Coding Studio installed and if you have internet access, it will actually go out and it will fetch the latest versions of the firmware automatically. All right, so uh, whenever you go to do this process, do make sure that you have internet access and uh, there's you know, nothing restricting you from being able to go out to the VEX website, and then it will automatically grab the latest versions for you. Uh, and then whenever you go to update the firmware, um, what you want to make sure that you do is that you connect your V5 robot brain uh, to the computer using a USB cable. And what's nice is whenever you go through the process of downloading firmware, it does update the firmware on the brain, but during that process, it also transfers all of the firmware files for other smart devices in the V5 system. Uh, so it will download firmware files for things like uh, the battery, the motors, uh, the radio, the controller. Uh, all of that gets transferred to the robot brain. And then what happens is uh, the next time that you um, power cycle your robot, after you have updated uh, the robot brains firmware is it will jump into this cycle of updating the other devices all right so uh so to reiterate what you want to do is have your robot have all of the things connected all the motors the controller the radio uh, the picture here just shows the robot brain but you do not have to disconnect everything that's just to simplify the the picture so connect your robot uh, connect it over USB. Inside of VEX Coding Studio, make sure that you have your computer connected to the internet and click on uh, the area where it says brain in the upper left corner. Uh, that will let you know if there's an update. If there is, go ahead and update it. Uh, and then afterwards, power cycle your robot, turn it off and back on, and it will update all of those other devices. Now, that's really, really nice um, because let's say you have to swap in a new motor or you have to swap in a new radio, something like that. Well, since the firmware lives on the robot brain, it will be able to update uh, those components directly in the field. Um, that said, uh, do make sure that you do all of this updating of firmware ahead of time uh, rather than on the fly at the competition. Uh, that way you'll have time to test it, uh, run it through its paces before taking your robot to the competition field. But uh, making sure that you are running the latest firmware will guarantee uh, a higher level of success, fewer bugs, fewer issues, uh, those kinds of things. Next up is uh, testing devices. 
this is something that is really, really nice with the V5 system. Um, with the VEX Cortex, uh, you didn't have much of a user interface on there. Uh, but with the V5 system, you have that full uh, touch LED. Well, with the touch LED, um, there is a screen called device info. Um, it's available from the front menu of your V5 brain. And the device info, what it will do is it will look for all of the connections on your robot. Uh, and that's connections uh, on the smart ports, but it can also detect the three wire connections. With the smart connections, it can actually detect what type of device it is. If it's a motor, if it's a vision sensor, if it's a radio. Uh, and so what you're able to do just with that screen is you're able to see, does the robot actually detect all of the motors that I have connected, the radio? Uh, do I have a bad cable? Uh, am I missing a cable? Um, so by uh, checking that all of your devices are correctly showing up there, uh, that will help you uh, in your troubleshooting as you're building the robot, as you're testing the robot. So definitely use this screen um, and then if you didn't know, you can actually tap on some of the devices, uh, such as the motors, and it will give you uh, more detailed information uh, regarding the motor as it's running. And not only that, but you can also choose to provide power to your motors from this screen. Uh, so you can ramp the speed up, uh, slow the speed down. And then uh, what that does is that allows you to test a subsystem of your robot without having to do programming or without running the full drive program. You can see, you know, if I pro provide enough power to this motor, is it making my drivetrain spin? Is it making the arm raise, et cetera? And so that's really helpful for being able to test ahead of time, uh, but also troubleshoot. You can verify that all of the connections electromechanically uh, are working. Um, on the device screen, uh, there is a triangle symbol that has a blue asterisk inside of it. Uh, if you tap on that, it will also give you access to all of the three wire uh, devices that you have connected. Um, and so if you're using legacy uh, sensors or motors, you can get access to those by tapping on that first. All right, so uh, this is super useful for competition teams and really all robots just to verify that things are working on an electromechanical level. Uh, next up is make sure that if you are writing your own programs for your VEX competitions, that you are using the competition template. Uh, we will spend uh, an entire webinar in the future uh, dedicated to programming inside of the competition template. So I won't go into a deep dive here and now. Um, but if you are writing your own autonomous routine, uh, rather than using the built-in drive program, then you absolutely must make sure that you are using the competition template. Uh, you can get access to that inside of VEX Coding Studio. Uh, whenever you start a new project, click on Example projects, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see that there is a section there called competition. Uh, and there are competition templates available for VEX C++ and also for C++ Pro. Right, so uh, the deal with the competition template is that uh, all of the code that you usually put inside of int main, uh, inside of your standard programs, uh, still stays exactly the same, um, but instead of keeping it inside of int main, you will take it and put it in different sections uh, of the competition template. So there's a, a void autonomous and a void user control where you will need to put your code instead. So again, this, this only applies if you are doing your own programming for the competition versus using the built-in drive program. But if you are, uh, make sure that you are uh, using the template. Okay, now, uh, again, before you get to uh, the competition, um, whether you are using the uh, competition template uh, or the drive program, uh, it's probably a good idea to do some testing with a VEXnet switch. A VEXnet switch simulates uh, the hardware uh, that you will encounter 
on the competition field. Uh, so if you didn't already know, whenever you get to a VEX robotics competition, uh, all teams must plug their controllers into a field control system. Uh, that allows the referees to start and stop the robots all at the same time, to disable a robot that's uh, malfunctioning or misbehaving. Um, and so that's why it's critical to use the competition uh, template inside of VEX Coding Studio or the Drive program. And then using this device here, the VEXnet switch, will allow you to do testing ahead of time without the full field control hardware. You can plug your controller in, you can run an autonomous routine, the driver control routine, enable and disable the robot, and you can make sure that your robot uh, will be in compliance ahead of time. Um, part of software inspection, whenever you get to a VEX robotics competition, is making sure that it is compliant uh, with the field control hardware. Uh, and so testing with this ahead of time um, will guarantee that you are. Uh, if you get to that software inspection and your robot does not enable at the right times and disable at the right times, they won't let you compete until it does. So uh, this lets you ensure that you are compliant and also test that your code runs as expected whenever you toggle those settings. All right, and then to continue uh, the discussion on compliance, one thing that you absolutely should do ahead of time is going through the rules of the game. Uh, this year, uh, especially, uh, there are some nuances that may not be obvious to you, um, but are very important whenever you are designing and building a, a robot for the competition. Uh, specifically, um, the VEX uh, EDR V5 robot brain will let you program uh, up to 10 motors, all running full power at the same, uh, same speed. Uh, but running 10 motors is not actually competition legal, uh, also depending on whether you're using pneumatics. Okay, so a big rule here to be aware of is that if you are using pneumatics with your V5 robot, you can have up to six of the smart motors. All right, and if you are not using pneumatics, you can have up to eight of the motors. So even though you could physically plug in more, um, make sure that you stay within these limits as these are the rules defined by the uh, Game Design Committee. Uh, I'd hate for you to show up to a competition, have 10 or 12 motors on your robot only to find that it's not competition legal. So make sure that you do go through all of the rules, checking for everything, uh, but this one in particular uh, has has not been known by all competition teams. So make sure that you do abide by all the rules and make sure that you stay within the motor and the, the sizing limits. Uh, the good news is the smart motors in the V5 system um, are so powerful uh, that you really shouldn't need more motors than these. Uh, they are a good deal stronger than the 393 motors. Uh, should, so you should be able to design really whatever you want to uh, in terms of a competitive robot. All right, so make sure you do check out those game rules. And then uh, I do have a few tips for at the competition, uh, just to make sure that you're aware of those, make sure that you're well supported. I want to talk about connecting to the field control, uh, starting your program, and then also some troubleshooting. Connecting to the field control. So pictured here, uh, I do have part of the field control system set up. Um, so the little black box that you see in the top right uh, picture is part of the field control hardware. Um, whenever you get to the competition field, what you should see is there are two of those, uh, one for the red alliance and one for the blue alliance. And so um, both members of the Red Alliance will plug into one and both members of the Blue Alliance will plug into one. Um, where they plug in is on the controller. Okay, so you don't plug your physical robot in or anything like that. Uh, it plugs in using an ethernet cable uh, to the wireless controller. After you have plugged your controller in um, to the field control system, 
what you should do is you should turn both the remote control and the robot on and allow them to sync or allow them to create a wireless connection. All right, so step one, whenever you get to the field, plug in using your controller. Step two, turn your robots and your controller on and allow them to connect wirelessly. Now, a big important thing to remember is after you have plugged your controller in and after you have turned both devices on, you are not done. Okay, uh, this is different from the VEX Cortex. With the VEX Cortex, it only allowed you to store one program at a time. And so whenever you turn the robot on, it just started running your code. All right, but that's not true here. With the V5, you can store up to eight user programs, plus there is the built-in drive program. All right, so after you have connected your controller, after you have turned on both your uh, controller and the robot, what you need to make sure to remember to do is to start your program. That can be a user program that you put together using a competition template, or it can be a program uh, like the built-in drive program. Okay, so whether it's the built-in drive program or a user program, you need to remember to start it. So that means going on uh, the screen of the robot brain or using the wireless interface of the V5 controller, jumpstart whichever code that you want to use. Uh, otherwise, um, the, the field control system doesn't know which which program, which slot, or the default drive program it is that you want to choose. So do remember whenever you get to the field and do those steps that you do want to uh, make your code selection, make your program selection, and start it. All right, and then uh, last but not least, uh, you, you might have to do some troubleshooting uh, at the competition. Uh, maybe something stops working as expected. Uh, it's very normal for competitions, very normal for uh, classrooms and things like that too. Uh, I cannot recommend strongly enough uh, the resources available at help.vex.com. Uh, there is a whole section there devoted to control system troubleshooting. Uh, there's also hardware troubleshooting. Uh, there's also a ton of information about getting started uh, and uh, the controller, the brain, the different electronics inside of the system. Uh, there's really a ton of great information there. So uh, while I have this categorized in at the competition troubleshooting, uh, I actually do recommend going through all of these materials ahead of time. Uh, learning how to troubleshoot, uh, learning how to go through the different setup procedures uh, will allow you to uh, debug any issues that may arise uh, with your robot. All right, so um, there's a lot of great guides there. Uh, they're all um, very straightforward in my experience. They have uh, pictures and steps and uh, really help um, get through some issues that may occur. All right, uh, so thanks everyone uh, for your time. Uh, again, we will be having additional webinars in the future. So if you do have questions, please do feel free to send those our way. Uh, our next webinar uh, will be in January and we'll be focusing on programming uh, using the competition template. All right, so thanks for your time, everyone. Uh, I hope that this information is helpful to you and good luck with your upcoming competitions.